Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to be discussing a change to my projectile firing utility that was shown to me last night. Uh, yesterday I posted my original projectile firing utility and the explanation for it, which was rather long and it was just overcomplicated. I posted it to the Datapack Hub Discord and I was informed of a much easier way of doing it, which is so simple and elegant that I feel kind of stupid for not considering it. And we're, we're first we're going to talk about what I did previously. Previously, what I was doing is I was calculating the, basically, a proportion of speed to a lot to any specific direction based on a player's rotation value. Now, this works. It was a fully functional system, but it was overcomplicated and completely unnecessary. Something I can do is I can very easily just calculate it using a teleport command right here. We have carrot notation. It might be hard, hard, kind of hard to see because it's in the bottom left of the screen. But what we have is we have carrot notation. Now, to understand why this works and how it works exactly, we need to understand how motion works in the game. Now, motion and position values are stored, stored both in a set of three doubles. Uh, let's programmer speak for saying it's stored in three values for three different directions. The x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. Now, if you can calculate the motion, or you can calculate the position difference that you want for an entity to be at in the next tick, or within the next second, you can get it from teleporting that entity forward one block using caret notation. So let's say I look in this direction, and then teleport myself with caret notation one block forward. Now that teleports me one block forward as if I was moving at one meter per second in that direction. Um, now doing that, if I can determine the difference between those two positions, I can get the actual motion value for the, uh, for the entity that is being thrown, essentially. So let's actually, now that I have that described, let's look at what I have changed. So we're, we're going to go ahead and look at the folders first. Uh, what we have here is we have a loop function, which right now is just running a right-click detection, so we're not going to be looking at that. That's very simple. Uh, what we also have is a setup function here, which just creates some scoreboards. I'll show that first once we get into looking at the files themselves. Then in here we have a fire folder, which has the shoot function, which is the sort of main function that runs all the rest of the functions, and then end right here, which is a termination. Then we have a projectile thing here that summons, and then we have a secondary function here, and then we have eight entities. And I'll show what each one of those does, or each one of these does, and each one of these is just basically a summon command with an extra bit of information added on. So let's head back to the fire here. Now motion, we have the calculation and the speed scaling. Now I'll show what that does as well. And then right here we have directional difference, which is just X, Y, and Z. This is a set of three uh, calculations, and I, I'll try to discuss why I have three functions for doing this whenever in reality I can do it with one command. It just really, uh, I feel, uh, uh, I'm sort of paranoid about using the other, the other method. So let's look at the files now. As I say files weirdly. Here we have our setup function. Fairly simple. All it does is adds the three scoreboards we're using, the projectile type, speed, and calculation, and those are used for varying different things. So now let's look at the shoot function here, which is a set of three functions that then run more functions. Uh, we have the projectile shooter, fire, projectiles, and summon. So let's look at summon here. Now summon basically is just another, or it basically positions the next function to be run a, one block ahead of the player's view. And then the function that's being run here is create projectile, which is a set of eight commands that are summoning or running the different uh, entity summoning commands here. What, what it's basically running is if your projectile type is one, it will summon an arrow. If it's two, it'll summon a, a dragon fireball and, and so on. Now, this is kind of what the summon commands looks like. What we have here is we have the arrow summoning, and then we have the projectile speed here. Now this is something I've added just to make this a little bit more modular, as well as adding the ability to modify the speed of the entity without having to hard code it. Uh, so that's the summoning of it. What we have next is the actual motion calculation. Now for motion calculation, we'll go over here. 
we summon an armor stand with the tag projectile duration and the end or direction. At the end here we kill it, so it's only used for these commands right here. Uh, and the first thing we do with it is we run a function for speed scale. Now speed scale makes it so this value right here is uh, the meters per second times two. The, the velocity in meters per second times two that you want. And how that works is for every one of those, it will teleport that armor stand we've summoned by half a block. So essentially, or it'll teleport by half a block, then it'll remove a projectile speed one, and then it will rerun this function if there still is more than one left in that scoreboard. Meaning, if it's set to three here, it'll run this three times teleporting this a total of 1.5 meters meaning the actual difference in calculation once we get to that bit uh, right here calculating the difference it will calculate the difference in meters per second essentially so what we're doing right here is we are doing a set of calculations that gets the players position and then another one that gets the armor stance position then this right here does a scoring or a store result into the entity's motion tag, the actual projectile's motion tag, and what it does is it runs a scoreboard operation, uh, subtracting the position of those two entities, getting the difference between them. And then we are also storing it into a, the direction, because some projectiles use motion and some use direction. And then for X, or for Y and Z, we have the same exact thing except for in X we have 0 here, in Y we have 1 here, and Z we have 2 here. And that is all of the motion calculation up to that point. Then at the end I said, we, or as I said, we do kill that armor stand, then we are resetting the player's uh, project, or, uh, projectile calculation score because we're not using it anymore. And then once we're done with that, we go back here, and once we're at the end of that, we just run the projectile uh, shooter fire end function which just does a little bit of cleanup at the end there and that is everything hopefully that makes sense it is a rather elegant solution to a really complicated problem that i thought i had um and i suppose take it as a tale of hubris and getting too attached to a certain idea leaving to such an overly complicated system that it took me 12 minutes to explain <laughs> so yeah thanks for watching and i will catch you all next time